Notion has just released one of their biggest updates ever, a complete overhaul to how databases look and in many cases work. And I am just gonna skip my normal preamble here because I'm gonna show you some of the coolest new features with this database redesign. So check this out. First and foremost, I've got this really cool sample workspace here where I'm selling some discount capes to some superheroes. And you can see right away that there is a tabbed view where now all of our database views are in this list of tabs across the top of the screen. So we can switch very easily without having to go into that little drop down menu, which is really, really nice. There is also now a unified view options menu. So you can go over here to the three dot menu and where we used to have only some of the options for our database. Now we have pretty much all of them. We can rename the view from this little uh, field right here. We can go to the layout area where we can choose board or table timeline view for the specific we're working on. We can show or hide the database title, which is really cool. Something I've wanted for a very long time. And we can come back here and mess with our properties, filters, sorts, etc. So a lot of good stuff here. And speaking of sorts and filters, there is now a completely redesigned filter and sort experience. So if I go over here and click the filter button, we are going to see a new filter and sort bar that is above our database content. And we can do some really cool things here, including adding what are called quick filters. So if I add a filter right here, and again, we're going to get more into this later, we're going to see this save for everyone button right here. So right now, this filter actually only applies to me and anybody else who has access to this database is not going to see that filtered view unless I come in here and save the filter for everyone else on the team, which is super cool. And last but not least, linked databases have gotten a huge overhaul as well, and they are now immensely more useful than they used to be. Not least of which because you can now look at multiple databases, multiple source databases from a single linked database block. So here I have this little sales dashboard and I've got one view called sales by customer, which is a linked database view of a customer's database. I can click here and we can see we're looking at customers. But if I go over to this next view sales by organization, this is a linked view of a completely different database. And I can come over here to our little three dot menu. And in addition to all the same view options we had earlier for original databases, we now have a source menu where I can actually change the source database for this particular view. Super cool. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a comprehensive overview of everything we just looked at. And by the end, you are gonna be an expert on how to use this brand new database experience. And what I'm also gonna be able to do now is finally finish out my Notion Fundamentals series with uh, the lesson on databases that I've wanted to do for a very long time, but I wanted to wait for this new UI update to come out so my video wasn't out of date. So if you wanna be notified about when that lesson is gonna drop, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals, which is the homepage for the entire course. You're gonna find written versions of each lesson and there is a email email sign up if you want to join my Notion Tips newsletter and get notified when that databases lesson drops and when new templates and tutorials drop in general. So with all that being said, let's get into this new better databases experience and dive more deeply into each of the features that I previewed in the beginning of this video. We're going to start with tabbed view. And honestly, there's not a ton to say about tabbed view. We just now have a better view of our database views uh, that's in a nice little horizontal row at the top of your databases here. If you have a lot of views, you are still going to see that drop down menu but if you only have a few and the screen is wide like this, you're going to easily be able to click between them. Not a ton to say there. What there is a lot more to say about is the brand new filter experience. Now, sorts haven't changed a whole lot. They are now in a new place. When you click sort, they're going to be over here. But other than that, your sorting criteria has not really changed a whole lot. Filters, however, have gotten a big upgrade and a big change. So now there are two different types of filters in Notion. There are advanced filters, which are the uh, old school filters that we are all used to where you can have lots of different steps and I actually don't have one right here on this view, but I'll make one as an example, but there's also what are called quick filters. So these are quick filters. They're very basic single step filters. They don't have or criteria. They're just single filters. And if I add one, let's say uh, 2020 sales is greater than uh, 500, then you're going to notice that if this database is shared with somebody else, which in this case it is, I'm going to get this little save for everyone button here. And what I have essentially done is create a filter that only I can see. So this is very useful if you're working with a team because you can now have a team accessible dashboard, but you can create a filter just for you that isn't going to affect everyone else on your team, which is really, really nice. Now, if I do want this to affect my team, I can go ahead and hit save for everyone, but there are also a couple of other options that I will uh, go through before I do that. Number one, you can reset that to simply get rid of this quick filter, or I can go to this little drop down menu here and I can save 
this new filter combo that I've created as a brand new view instead of altering this one, which is really nice. I can also merge this into an advanced filter and I'll actually show you what that does. Once I hit that, all of my filters now go into uh, the filter experience that you are much more used to seeing. So now this is what's called an advanced filter and I can do things like creating those filter groups like we used to have and that's going to apply to our database uh, like it always has. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one. Now that I made a change, once again, I see this little save for everyone button. So once I hit this now, it says here, changes have been saved for everyone. This view is going to be visible by anybody who has access to the database. Now, one thing I will mention about these quick filters is that they don't have quite the same capabilities as an advanced filter might in all cases. And the one example I'll give you here is with date filters. So if I go ahead and create a filter by our last contact date, and let's just say, I only wanna see people that I last contacted um, before, December 9, 2021. That works just fine. But what you will notice with the date filters right now within quick filters is I don't have access to those dynamic date options like today, tomorrow, uh, last week, those kind of things. So if you wanna get access to those, you wanna turn this quick filter into an advanced filter. And then we can, instead of using custom date, move over and do things like one week ago, one month ago, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one month ago, is before one month ago, and that's gonna change our filter criteria. One other small little quirk that I did notice when I was testing this out for myself, and I think this might get uh, patched out quite quickly, so this could make the video out of date, but I did notice when you hit the filter button up here, that shows and hides this filter and sort combo bar, whereas with the sort button, it just goes ahead and shows the sort criteria or hides it. And it's not really clear from the UI that filter is going to show and hide this, but sort isn't, so I found that a bit confusing, but uh, once you get used to it, it's not that big of an issue. So let's go ahead and clear these filters so I can see all of my wonderful superheroes I'm selling capes to. I'll save that for everyone. And now let's take a look at the unified view options window. Again, like I said in the beginning of the video, you're gonna have basically all the options for this view of this database in this new unified area. So if I go to layout, I can change this to any other kind of layout I want. So maybe a board view, I can go back to table view. Uh, I can also change certain options here. So this is now where you're gonna find certain options like, uh, let's just say, if I go back to a board view, uh, your card preview, your card size. So I could change this to small. These used to be inside of the properties menu. Now they're inside the layout menu, which I think makes a lot more sense personally. So I'll go ahead and change that back to table. I'm gonna keep showing my database title. I'm gonna keep wrapping my cells and let's check out properties. The only thing I'll mention here, it's pretty much the same as it used to be, except it now uses the same little design convention that the grouping menu used where your shown and hidden properties are separated from each other. So I think that's actually pretty nice. And you can actually see deleted properties as well. And you can even restore them if you want to. I don't wanna restore this because it's not necessary, but if I wanted to, I could. We also have access to our filters and our sorts. I've already covered that here. We have our grouping options. I've got a whole video about those grouping options here on TF Explains. You can check that out. I'll link to it below. And we have our load limit. And then we have some lock link duplicate delete options here. Uh, nothing too fancy. So that is our view options area. And now I would like to show you the part of this update that I am personally most excited about, which is the updates to the linked database block. The linked database block is now immensely useful, uh, again, because we can actually choose a different source database per view inside the linked database. So let me actually show you, I'm just gonna recreate this little sales dashboard here to show you exactly how it works. I'm gonna hit my slash command. And one thing you'll notice is that the name of the linked database block has actually changed very slightly. I think it used to be called create a linked database. Now it is a linked view of a database, but slash linked works just as it used to. So I can create that. And the first thing it's going to do is ask me what the data source for this first view is going to be. So let's go ahead and choose customers. And now it's gonna ask me if I want to copy an existing view from the source database. So if you have already views in the source database that already have shown hidden properties or complex filter and sort criteria, this is a very nice time-saving option for creating your linked databases. Unfortunately, you cannot currently copy a view from another linked database block. I did try that myself, but that's not an option quite yet. But it is nice to have this uh, ability to pull views from the original database itself. I don't think I actually wanna do this. I think I wanna create a brand new empty view. I'm just gonna call this sales by customer. 
and I'm going to make it a table view. I do want to wrap my cells. And if I wanted to, if I want to make this a nice clean dashboard where I'm not seeing these database names, I can go ahead and hide the database title, which is really, really nice. Now, uh, what I've wanted for a very long time in Notion is the ability to create database aliases, like basically different names for the same database when I'm using linked databases. This doesn't quite get us that, but what it does get us is the ability to hide that annoying database title there. And then if I wanted to, I could just create, say, a heading and we just call this maybe sales. And by using the heading block, instead of showing the title of the database, I can create a much cleaner looking dashboard. So that would be very useful if I wasn't going to be showing multiple source databases in the same linked database block. But here I am. So I do want to get rid of that because I don't want to confuse myself. So now I have my sales by customer. I could go in and I can add another view. And now it asks me again, what I want the source to be. So for this one, I'm going to choose organizations. I'm going to once again, create an empty view and I will leave it as a table. So let's just call it orgs and I'll wrap my cells once again and boom, I'm good to go. Now, one other really nice thing you can do with the linked databases specifically is I can come up to the three dot menu and I can lock the views in this linked database block. So I'm not necessarily locking the database, which used to be our only option. I'm instead of locking these views in this linked database block. And if I go back to the source database, you can see that it is not locked. I could lock it if I wanted to, but the locked views is something completely separate from the databases themselves being locked. So that is pretty much everything you need to know about the brand new better databases experience inside of Notion. Besides these changes that I've shown you in this video, pretty much everything else works as it used to inside of Notion. You can sort, you can move your properties just like you need to. Well, if it wasn't locked, I could do that. You can do your calculations, but it's now wrapped in a better UI and we have some more power, especially in the realm of linked databases. And I'm very happy with this update personally. So if you are not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button because I've got lots more Notion tutorials and templates coming down the pipeline. In fact, I will tease this now. I've been working on a complete unified second brain template. It's called Ultimate Brain. It marries tasks, projects, notes, goals. It's basically what I have wanted Notion to be for my personal productivity for the past four years that I've been using this tool. It's been a big design challenge, but I'm just about ready to release it. So if you want to get on the wait list for that, you can go over to thomasjfrank.com slash brain. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments section down below or follow Follow me on Twitter over at Tom Frankly. See you in the next one.